Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson I'm going to introduce you to a brand new function, the if error function. Excel 2007 gives us this new function, the if error. When we use it, it will prevent any errors in our formulas from displaying in our worksheet. What are formula errors? Here they are. They're never good. When we send out a worksheet to a client that includes formula errors, it opens up a suspicion about what else we weren't careful about or what is causing that error. So I'm going to show you how to use the if error function to prevent formula errors from displaying. Now this is a brand new function in Excel 2007 and I'll warn you that if you're working with colleagues or clients who continue to use older versions of Excel, the if error function will not perform in older versions. If you need to share your worksheet, then you will have to use the isError function. Now the isError function is actually nested inside an if function. So let me show you the new if error function. We'll start with the equal sign if error. And I do like function autocomplete in Excel 2007. So when I find the function that I want to use, I don't have to type the entire function. Press tab and now I can begin to use the arguments. I always use the control A keyboard shortcut to bring up the function arguments dialog box. So there are two required arguments. First is the value. Well the value will be the result of this formula, sales divided by customers. What value do I want to display in the cell in case there is an error in performing this formula? I want to include nothing in there. So I do that by using double quotation mark, space bar, double quotation mark. Of course I could put anything in there. I could put double quotation mark, value not yet available, double quotation mark. So there we go and now the beauty comes in when I copy this formula down. So down here, if error, the value is the formula and what will happen if there is an error, it will display a blank entry. So there actually is the formula in there, but no entry, no return will show if there is going to be an error. All right, now if you are using the older versions, you will have to nest the is error function inside an if function. Let's see the is error by itself. And I always use control A to bring up the argument. So there's one argument in there, the value. So will there be an error when I perform this formula? In this case it's going to be false. Now that's going to be important because remember in logical statements, which are if functions, the logical test, value of true, value of false. So let's begin with the if function equals if left parentheses. Now we'll nest the is error function inside that. So remember what we want to do with the is error. It, it evaluates a formula to see will there be an error. Well we already know it's false. So now over here value if true. So the value if it's going to be true we want to display are blank, which is double quotation mark, space, double quotation mark, and the value, if false, will be our formula. Sales divided by customers. And remember to include the right parentheses in your arguments. So again, the result is going to be the same when we come down here and evaluate. There is a, no error displaying, but it's a lot more complicated if and then nesting is error inside. So if you have Excel 2007, it's so much easier to use the brand new if error function. And of course, if I were to put a value in here, then I have the result of that function, the result of that formula. So there you've learned about learned about the brand new if error function, but you also have learned that if you are sharing your worksheet with clients or customers who use the older version, you will have to nest the is error function inside the if function. And I'll see you in the next lesson.